take a stance over your emotion, over your feelings, and you guys just believe God, and you guys kept trusting God. You kept saying, even after she had had the miscarriage, you, you kept standing and saying that Joshua was here. You said the spirit of Joshua never died. You, you kept saying that you wouldn't allow yourself to stress. You wouldn't allow yourself to get agitated. You wouldn't permit yourself to get distress, get in stress. And, and I think you're able to teach this with that level of conviction because you've already walked through that season. Well, like we taught on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. What it boils down to is this. Mm -hmm. The devil is trying to get us to give up. Mm -hmm. Now, the devil knows uh -huh. that he can't be God. Right. The devil knows that he can't beat faith. Uh -huh. But the devil knows that uh -huh. if he can get us to give up, right. then we basically beat ourselves. Right. Right. So, so in, in that situation, was it painful? Of course. Uh -huh. did, did, I, did I basically lose it for a little while? Of course. Uh -huh. I mean, I went through my emotional thing and right. I cried and all of that. Right. And once I got past that, I came to myself. Right. I braced myself. Uh -huh. I got in the word and I said, Lord, you got to show me. And, and, you know, the testimony and we mm -hmm. talked about it. The Lord took me through a series of scriptures. Mm -hmm. The end result of it was that the Lord told me that, hey, Joshua's a spirit. This was an attack. You know, we, you lost that body but just make them another body. Right. And so uh, we, know, <laughs> we know that we stood on that word. The doctor uh -huh. said we had to wait, I think it was like uh, six or seven weeks. Uh -huh. And I told my wife, I said, as soon as you're ready, I don't care mm -hmm. what the doctor says, we need to come together because the Lord said we got to make them another That's body. That's right. And three weeks later, she said she was ready. We came together uh, because faith without works is dead. There you go. Uh, but we, came, we had to do our part. <laughs> but we came together and uh -huh. uh, we made him another body. Right. And so he's here today. Yes, sir. And so uh, here's another quick testimony since you brought up Joshua. So yeah. his middle name, uh -huh. uh, this is another testimony. Um, the, on the middle name, the Lord, what, after we had created the other body and she was pregnant again, the Lord told me one day I was in prayer and the Lord told me um, uh, as I was praying, don't associate pain with the promise. Wow. And I said, what? He said, don't associate pain with the promise because what I don't want you to do is every time you see Joshua to remember the miscarriage or to relive the pain. And I said, okay. So then he took me to Genesis mm -hmm. where, where uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph's wife was, was having this child. Right. And as she was having the baby, mm -hmm. she knew she was going to die. Mm -hmm. And so as she was dying, she said to her husband, uh, call him, or this is Jacob, Jake, I'm sorry. Jake. Name him mm -hmm. Ben or Nye, right. which means son of sorrow. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that Jacob knew better right. than to name him son of sorrow. There you go. And Jacob said, no, 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 I'm not going to curse the boy like that. That's right. I'm going to call him Ben Jamin, uh -huh. which means the son of my right hand. All right. So instead of calling him son of sorrow, right. I'm going to call him the son of my right hand. All right. So my son's middle name is Benjamin uh -huh. because the Lord told me to, to just remember the promise and not the pain. Wow. And I can share this with you now uh -huh. without any negative emotions whatsoever. Right. And that's how you know when your scars become stars. Come on, son. When you can share it and not relive it. <laughs> now, you know how you talk to somebody uh -huh. and, and they've been through a testimony right. and you bring it up and say, hey, why don't you tell? And they can't do it. Right. Because if just bringing it up, their eyes well up. And, that's right. And, you know, well, then that's still a scar. Uh -huh. That's not a star. Right. But once you, your scars become Come stars, on. Come you on. can relive that thing. You Come can tell on. it. You can Come say, on. and watch this. You can say this. Had the devil known any better, uh -huh. he would have left me alone. That's right. That's First Corinthians right. 2 says, had the princes of this world know what no. they were doing, yes, they would have never crucified uh -huh. the Lord of glory. Yes, sir. When they were killing him, they thought they were winning. Uh -huh. But when that first drop of blood hit the ground, yes, sir. that drop of blood sealed their fate. Uh -huh. And so if the devil knew any better, he would simply leave us uh -huh. alone. Let's go to Psalms 125. Okay. I want to read something from Psalms 125, uh -huh. just the first two verses. Yes. I like this right here. Uh, Psalms 125, verses 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read it from the New International Version. It says, those who trust in the Lord, I'm talking about trust, right? That's right. Are like Mount Zion. All right. Which cannot be shaken. Come on. But endures forever. Yes. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, mm -hmm. so the Lord surrounds his people. People. Both now. And, and forevermore. Evermore. So the Lord surrounds. We know the Lord is unmovable, right. but he says that those who trust the Lord right. can be unmovable. That's right. Can be like Mount Zion. Uh -huh. What do we know about Mount Zion? Well, one of the things mm -hmm. we know is that it's not going anywhere. It's not going nowhere. I mean, so we can be like Mount Zion, Zion. 
that we cannot be moved, moved. Uh-huh. that we can be so fixed uh-huh. and focused right. in our faith that we shall not be moved, no matter what the enemy comes. Uh-huh. So that, that way we can resist negative stress right. because we're more focused on the word yes, than sir. the issues that are coming up against yes. us. So our focus is in the right place. Uh-huh. This actually reminds me of a, of a familiar story in scripture. Uh-huh. In Mark chapter 5, Jesus had a very busy day. Mm-hmm. He, got, he gets up this morning, really going back to Mark chapter four. Right. And it goes into chapter five. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and this is where, you know, we teach uh, uh, about pastors, ministers that, hey, when you get in ministry, ministry is, is, is work. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, yes. there's, there's a lot of work. So Jesus gets up. He starts teaching. The Bible says he taught all day. And uh-huh. He taught in parables. After all day of teaching, right. uh, he gets into a boat. He says, listen, let's go to the other side. He's tired. Mm-hmm. He gets into the boat. He's so tired. He takes a nap. Right. While he's sleeping, uh-huh. a storm comes. Yes. A storm comes up and rises up against the word he spoke, uh-huh. which was, let's go to the other side. Right. He's so confident in what he spoke that he's sleeping through the storm. Yes. He's sleeping in the midst of a storm. Uh-huh. The disciples think they're going to die. Uh-huh. They wake him up and say, Lord, uh-huh. you know, man, you're not even, you're going to, it doesn't even bother you that we're about to die. Uh-huh. He gets frustrated. He says, once again, you have little faith. Right. He, speak, he rebukes the wind, speaks to the storm, peace be still. They make it to the other side. He cast out a legion of demons mm-hmm. out of a man that was in the land of Gad of the Galileans. Right, right. After that, he gets back into the boat. Now, this, this day is, is going on for a while. That's right. He gets back into the boat. They go back, back to, the, to other, the other side. There's uh-huh. a crowd waiting for him. Uh-huh. He gets out of the boat. As soon as he steps on the seashore, here comes a man. He's a ruler yeah. of the synagogue, falls down at his feet, says, listen, my daughter's lying at the point of death. This was the situation. I'm right. not lying about it. Right. But here's the word of faith. If you would come lay your hands on her, uh-huh. she shall recover. Right. And she shall live. Uh-huh. And that word of faith caused Jesus to, to work. He said, let's yes. go. So Jesus is walking with Jairus. Mm-hmm. The disciples are coming. And the whole crowd followed. Because I like to say church folk are nosy. Right, right. But anyway, so here uh-huh. you have this crowd. They're on their way to Jairus' house. And here's the woman. Now, this woman had an issue of blood uh-huh. for 12 years. Yeah. Her menstrual cycle got stuck in the arm position. That's right. So that would be bad enough today. Uh-huh. But it was super bad for her in that time because when you were in your menstrual cycle, according to Leviticus, you had to, you were ceremonially unclean. That's right. So you couldn't associate with people. You couldn't right. associate with your husband. We, you, you basically were a prisoner in your own body. Own body. So now she's a prisoner in her own body for 12 Uh, years. Not only that, she's been bleeding for 12 years. So if you've been hemorrhaging for 12 years, I know you're going to be physically debilitated. Mm -hmm. Not only that, she went to all the doctors. Uh, She didn't get any better. She grew worse and she spent all her money. So now here she is, financially broke, Mm -hmm. physically bruised and debilitated. Right. Psychologically, she's bruised too because Uh, she's socially an outcast, but... She heard about Jesus. Heard about him. Man, I mean, uh-huh. so here's one of the things that you can't do when you're stressed out. Uh-huh. You can't give up hope. No, you can't. As a believer, you can never give up hope. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, let me share a few things okay. uh, that we can learn from her that can apply to okay. us today. Number one is don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. I shared on Tuesday mm-hmm. one of the greatest phrases I've heard, four words, yesterday ended last night. That's right. I mean, yesterday's over. Let uh-huh. it go. Right. This is a brand new day, brand new grace. Right. Don't dwell on the past. Uh-huh. She could have easily. I mm-hmm. mean, if anybody was a candidate for being frustrated, she was a candidate. She was a candidate. I mean, uh-huh. and, and nobody would have blamed her. Right. She could have easily said, you know, I spent all my money. Uh-huh. You know, here I am. I'm still bleeding. I went right. to all the right. doctors. They couldn't help me. Nobody can help me. The, and the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they're not helping me. All they do is tell me to stay in my house right. because I'm ceremonially unclean. So yep. nobody had any answers for it. So, but she, she didn't dwell on the past. Right. She heard a word. She heard a word. And she, she allowed herself uh-huh. to hope. Yes, sir. She allowed herself. Uh-huh. Now, another thing we can do is, especially when we're, we're facing a situation that seems bigger than us, mm-hmm. is expand our capacity to believe God. So, let's, let's be honest. She really had no basis mm-hmm. for believing that right. she could be healed. Mm-hmm. I mean, she... She had done physically everything that she could do, humanly speaking. Right. But some way, somehow, she expanded her capacity. She expanded her To the point where she said, if I just touch him, Mm -hmm. I shall be made whole. Right. Not, I mean, forget it. This is not a money thing. This is not Mm -hmm. a doctor thing. This is not a Pharisee thing. This is not a Sadducee thing. This is not a law thing. Right. I'm saying, if I get out there, I'm just crazy enough to believe Mm -hmm. that if I touch him, 
Right. I shall be made whole. Right. We serve a God of no limits. Right. Problem is, we put artificial limits. Come on, son. On a limitless God. Right. Once we start taking off the artificial limits that we place on our limitless God, uh -huh. it opens him up to right. operate in our life. Right. Number three, get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. Now, the world says, no, don't get your hopes up uh -huh. because, we, you know, if you get your hopes up, uh, you can be disappointed. Uh -huh. Romans 5 and 5, let me read this for you. Okay. From the New Living Translation. Okay. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. disappointment. He says, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Mm -hmm. His Holy Spirit is in us to fill our hearts with his love and to fill us with a hope that mm -hmm. does not disappoint. Wow. So the hope that we have in God, I, does I'm saying, not. Well, listen, if you're out there, you're stressed out, I'm telling you that there is a, there's a hope that does not disappoint. Get your hopes up today. Believe God. Expand your capacity to believe God. Reach out to God, and he'll be there for you. Uh -huh. Number four. All right. Speak faith-filled words. All right. She did it. She did it. She said, if I could just touch him, uh -huh. touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Uh -huh. It couldn't have been in what she did. Right. It was in her faith. Right. Because when, when Jesus said, somebody touched me, the disciples were like, come on. Uh -huh. Jesus, lots of people are touching. Right. But not like, like she did. Right. Because her touch was connected to her faith. That's right. And her faith was activated through her words. Come on, son. Through her own tongue. Uh -huh. And then finally, put your faith in action. Mm. You can talk about it all day long. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, you have to do something. You got to do you something. You can have faith in your lips, but you right. got to have faith in your legs. Right. And you got to get out there and do something. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, let's, let's close this thing out with a confession uh, okay. so that we can seal the deal. Okay. Uh, and, and, and you that are watching, please follow along with us. Say, Father. Father. No matter how bad. No matter how bad. Of a situation. Of a situation. I find myself in. I find myself in. I know that one touch. I know that one touch. One word. One word. One encounter. One encounter. With you. With you. Can turn it around. Can turn it around. There's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing that you cannot do. Your hands are not too short. Your your hands are not too short that you cannot reach me that you cannot reach me your power is not too weak your power is not too weak that you cannot provide a breakthrough that you cannot provide a breakthrough and a breakout and a breakout for me for me I am never hopeless I am never hopeless because you are in me because you're in me and you're always with me and you're always with and me. since I am never helpless and since I'm never helpless I'm never hopeless I am never hopeless and, and I declare and I declare by faith by faith that my hope that my hope is in you is in you today today right where I am right where I am you can manifest your glory you can manifest your glory in such a way in such a way that you will help me that you will help me to get out to get out to where you want me to be to where you want me to be and I know and I know that you can and you can I believe I believe that you will you will I receive it I receive it by faith by faith amen 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 son again we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule we know that you're a busy man and course we're so privileged to have you to be with us this week and just to share your heart and your notes and uh, we ask that uh, you will continue to pray for us we're going to pray for you and anytime you're in the greater CSRA you know son you've got an opportunity to share God's word again tell the people about your website that way they can tune in and we didn't get a chance to share all these notes is it possible for them to go on your website and get these notes absolutely you can go to www.todaysword.org T-O-D-A-Y-S-W-O-R-D dot O-R-G and uh, have lots of series available there. I believe that they'll be a blessing to you. You can also go to rickpina.org, R-I-C-K-P-I-N-A dot org. And I have notes and videos and audio sermons and all that stuff there. And it's all free of charge. I pray that it'll be a blessing to you. And thank you so much, Dad, for this opportunity. I, I always love coming home. Well, it's a privilege and an honor. And some of you pastors that are watching out there, this man of God has been a blessing for you. You want to get a hold to him. Go on his website there, and he'll come in and share you an awesome word from God's word. And again, thank you, son.